Numerical Computation, Chapter 9, Video 5. We now learn a new type of method called Ronkakuta method. So we begin by um, observing that in the Taylor series method, especially um, in high order Taylor series method, there is a difficulty in the method that is the method needs the high order derivatives like x double prime, x triple prime, which might be very difficult to get. A better method should only use the value f, not its derivatives. So this gives rise to a different type of method, which we call Ronkakuta method. The first order method would be the same as uh, Euler's method, that's also the first order Taylor series method, because we see that um, the method only uses um, f and not f prime. The second order method now is different. So, okay, fix some notation. Let now h be the grid size, um, time step size from tk to tk plus 1. And given an xk, and we want to compute the next value. The next value xk plus 1 is computed as xk plus and half times the sum of two constants. We call it capital K1 and capital K2. And they are computed as follows. K1 is simply h times f evaluated at tk and xk. So um, this would be the same term in Euler's method to be added on xk to approximate for xk plus 1. And then k2 is computed as h times f, now not evaluated at tk, xk anymore, but at tk plus h, and an xk plus capital K1, which we have just computed earlier. So keeping in mind k1 or xk plus k1 is an approximation to the value of xk plus 1. So this f here would be actually the x prime approximated value at tk plus 1. This method is also called an Hoyne's method. So here's a theorem on the Hoyne's method. It says the method is of second order. And let's see how we can prove it. So from the error analysis we did for Taylor series method, we know that in order to show the method is of second order, it's enough to show that local truncation error is of third order. And that's what we're going to show here. Writing out Taylor expansion for functions of two variables, the function f at tk plus h and xk plus k1 expanded at xk and tk, we have the following. So this value here equals to f evaluated tk and xk and plus and then the first order partial derivatives in t and the distance traveled in t from tk to tk plus h, so it's h f sub t, and then plus um, f sub x at tk xk, and multiply by how far away this value is from xk, which is k1, and then plus higher order terms, meaning um, higher derivative than higher order in both h and k1. We see that um, k1 would equal to h times f, so it's of order h. So actually, um, the final term here, the whole thing is just of order h squared because k1 squared is of order h squared. Okay, and then we can write out k2. What is k2? Well, k2 is just h times this f here and write out its expansion. We get that. Okay, and now we plug um, k1 and k2 in, into the um, Hoyne iteration, and we see that xk plus 1 now equals to xk plus half of 
K1 plus K2, where K1 is just H times F. So everything here is evaluated at TKXK, and we drop the dependence to make the notation shorter. Okay, so this actually would be um this first term here is just K1. And the, the rest here, these are actually just um, K2. Okay, and then um, clean up a little bit, and we see that we can join these two together and get a 2. It cancels the half, we get just that term. And then um, these two terms can be put together and taking out H squared. So we have this. And all the higher order terms are um, collected here. Okay, so um, we have shown that xk plus 1 actually equals to this expression. Okay, so here we repeat what we had at the end of the previous page. And now let's see how does this approximation compare to the exact solution. So let's write out the Taylor expansion for the exact solution at x t k plus 1, which is x at t k plus h. And we will write out its expansion, expand it at t k. So standard Taylor series gives me x t k, h times x prime t k, half h square x double prime t k, plus all the higher order terms dominated by the third order. Okay, so x prime we know is just f, we plug that in, and then x double prime we know is ft plus fx x prime, and we plug it in, and then we have the third order term. Now we drop the notation of the dependence on tk and xk, and simply write it out like that, and now we can compare. So comparing um this to that, we see that the first term here is nothing but xk, so it's the same as that xk. And then the second term, hf, is also the same. And the third term, a half h squared ft plus fxf, is also the same. So the first three terms are exactly the same, and if these two terms shall be different, the difference would start from the terms of order h third. Okay, so if you want to um, compute the local truncation error, which we denoted by E L, which is the um, distance between x k and x at t k plus one in absolute value, then we know this must be something of order h to the third. So this indicating the local truncation error is third order, and therefore the method is second order. And we complete the proof. One can also view Horn's method as a some kind of a trapezoid method for numerical integration. To see that, we first integrate the ODE, x prime equals to ftx, over the time interval from tk to tk plus 1. If we do that, and the fundamental theory of calculus gives us that the x value at tk plus h equals to the x value at tk plus the integral from tk to tk plus h of the derivative of x. And we know the derivative of x equals to f, and which we plug in. So we have this equation here. So we... um rewrote the differential equation into an integral equation. Say now the value at tk is given some approximate value, which is xk. Then we want to compute the value xk plus 1. So we think that this is um, xk, and then we want to compute xk plus 1. And we see that we need to work out this integral. And we can use some numerical integration to approximate the integral, which should give us some iteration method. 
And in the Hohen's method, we see that what is my K1? Well, K1 is H times um, F at TK, which is X prime at TK. And then K2 is uh, H times F evaluated at TK plus H. So it's an approximation to X prime at TK plus H. Then we apply the trapezoid rule for this little integral here using h over 2 of the value at tk and the value at tk plus h. And then we see we could put k1 in here and we could put k2 in here as an approximation. And then this gives me exactly half of k1 plus k2. And putting all of these back into this equation, if we write it out, this is exactly Horn's iteration. Hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.